Germany on strike. Everything seems to have come to a still stand in Germany in recent weeks. It seems that nothing is working because of all the strikes. Is Germany country full of strike happy workers? Let's take a look. Before Christmas the train drivers ended their negotiation with Deutsche Bahn and showed that they were ready for industrial action with several warning strikes. Then there were the farmers who blocked city centers and motorways in large tractor convoys. Then in January the train drivers called a strike lasting up to six days in a row, the longest strike in the history of the GDL Union. After a good three days they sat down at the negotiation table again. But shortly afterwards the Verdi Union called a warning strike and planes were grounded. In Berlin and Frankfurt. The Verdi Union called for their members to down tools for 24 hours until tonight after their demands for better pay and benefits for some 25,000 security staff stall. Wait a minute. That was a case a year ago. And then hundreds of thousands of people demonstrated in countless cities against right-wing extremists so that nobody could get through the streets. And last week medical assistants went on strike for the first time ever. The Verband Medizinischer Berufe, VMF, the Association of Medical Professionals, called its member out on a warning strike for the first time. What is going on in Germany? First of all, we should differentiate between demonstrations and strikes. Article 8 of the Basic Law allows people to assemble peacefully at any time. The second paragraph stipulates that an assembly outside may be restricted by other regulations. So, whether it's a demonstration or a strike, people can assemble. If they want to do this outside, i.e. not in a rented hall or on their own land, the demonstration must be registered. This is also how farmers have registered the protests or demonstrators against the right. If, for example, both a group in favor and a group against want to demonstrate, both are allowed to do so, but separately, so that there are no clashes. And even if traffic is affected by the protest, this is acceptable due to the freedom to demonstrate. Demonstrating is therefore a fundamental right in Germany and is possibly for a wide variety of reasons, whether for peace, for the environment, for more charity or even for the nonsense spread by covid -ids. In Germany, on the other hand, a strike is a stoppage of work in order to persuade the employer to make concessions. In principle, strikes are only permitted in wage disputes between trade unions and employers or employer representatives. For example, in the wage dispute between the Gewerkschaft Deutscher Lokomotivführer GDL, the Union of Locomotive Drivers, and the Deutsche Bahn, the German Railway Company, or the Verband der Medizinischen Fachberufe and the Arbeitsgemeinschaft zur Regelung der Arbeitsbedingungen der Arzthelferin Medizinischen Fachangestellte AAA, the Working Group to regulate the working conditions of medical assistance. Wow, what a name for an employer association. If farmers do not work and protest, this is a demonstration and not a strike, as it is not a collective bargain dispute. If employed farmers were to negotiate better working conditions or higher wages with their employers, this could develop into a strike. If the negotiations on a collective agreement are not brought to a successful conclusion, warning strikes can be organized by the union during the negotiations. And if negotiations are broken off, even longer term strikes. The ultimate aim is to persuade the employer to make concessions. Article 9 of the Baby Laws guarantees freedom of association and paragraph 3 also gives the right to strike. Employers are also allowed to join forces. This means 
that not every doctor's practice negotiates individually but all together via the AAA. As we know, the articles of the basic law were prioritized in order to make it impossible to undermine democracy in the future, as happened under the National Socialists. The first 20 articles may not be amended. With articles 8 and 9, these articles also apply. Now, let's get back to strike. We are in collective bargaining, for example, about a higher wage. Negotiations are very often held in a region in Germany on a collective agreement. In the metal industry, there's a group in the northern federal states along the coast, another group in the center, Baden-Württemberg or Bavaria, have their own agreements. Sometimes negotiations take place with just one employer, such as with the major car manufacturers. It is often the case that the other regions orientate themselves on the agreements of the first regions to negotiate. This means that there are actual very few strikes. In most of European countries, strikes are more frequent than in Germany. It should be noted that in other countries there can also be a general strike for political reasons, which is not possible in Germany. Strikes in Germany become particularly well known when they are published in the media and affect private individuals. The trade unions take advantage of this. If only a few people have to strike to have a big impact, that helps. If there's a strike in the public sector, the childcare workers are happy to go on strike. If the children can't go to the nurseries, the kindergarten, one parent usually has to stay at home so that employers who are not in the public sector notice the strike. When the rubbish collectors go on strike, people quickly get sick of it. But what does the strike mean for the employee? First of all, if the strike is organized by a trade union, it is a lawful strike and the employer may not dismiss or warn the people because of it. However, the employer does not have to pay the employee for the time not worked. The trade unions pay strike pay for this. The amount of the strike pay varies depending on the trade union, affiliation and membership fee. It can be up to three times the monthly membership fee per strike day. This means that if all employees in a company go on strike, no one receives money from the employer, but only the union members receive strike pay. In return, the members have previously paid their monthly membership fee. So if the strike lasts longer, non-unionized workers will consider going back to work after all. This is what employers are counting on. If the employers want to exert pressure on the unions, they could resort to a lookout. This is also announced by the employers' organization. Employers then look out a company and nobody can work there anymore. Then nobody gets paid there either. The union members then receive money from the union, but the non-organized employees do not. This is usually not done in a company that is on strike anyway, but in another company. From this perspective, employees and employers have equal opportunities. In fact, however, there have been no lockouts since reunification until 2020 when the management of the Gilde Brauerei brewery in Hanover tried to defend itself against a collective agreement, locked out and even split up the company and then had parts of it dissolved through insolvency. Apart from this legally questionable practice by Gilde Brauerei, lockouts no longer occur in practice. Due to contractual obligations, employers would suffer even greater financial losses as a result of a lockout. It is therefore good for employers if trade unions have few members. This means that more employees are dependent on wages and strikes are not as widespread and long-lasting. Strictly speaking, collective agreements apply to employers bound by a collective agreement vis-à-vis -vis employees bound by collective agreements. However, as employers generally pay all employees the same wage, it is not worthwhile for employees to join the union. Conversely, companies that are not actually organized in the employers' association 
also offer collective agreements. If both employers and employees apply for this, a collective agreement can also be declared generally binding. Non-organized companies must then also adhere to it. Unfortunately, this is happening less and less. At the beginning of the 1990s, more than 5% of collective agreements were generally binding, but the figure is currently around 1%. Even before the introduction of the minimum wage, things sometimes got heated. In 2007, for example, a collective agreement between Post AG and three trade unions was applied for to be generally binding, so that employees who delivered letters would receive a minimum wage of €9.80 Euro from 2008. At the time, the PIN group was largely owned by Axel Springer Verlag, which was already campaigning against the minimum wage through its newspapers Bild and Die Welt. The PIN group therefore founded an employers' association and its own labor union, with which a minimum wage of 7,80 Euro was agreed. As PIN thus had a collective labor agreement, the general binding nature of the agreement no longer applied. Where the PIN group went bankrupt because it was making losses despite dumping wages, Axel Springer Verlag withdrew. It was not until 2015 that a general binding minimum wage was introduced across all sectors in Germany, at that time €8.50. While the amount was recommended by a collective bargaining committee made up of representatives from employers and trade unions, the amount was raised to €12 Euro by the government in 2022. This year the minimum wage was increased to €12.41. Euro in principle, this applies to everybody who is not a minor or is employed as part of a vocational training. I've explained what dual vocational training is here. Higher minimum wages have been agreed in various collective agreements depending on the sector. It is therefore understandable that the medical assistant, whose starting salary was 13 euro, went on strike for the first time, which had an immediate effect. The result was announced yesterday on 16th of February, which is before the broadcast, but after the recording of the video. I'm also curious. So if the children go on a Friday school strike for climate, then, strictly speaking, in Germany, it's not a strike because the children don't get money for learning, but it's definitely a meaningful demonstration. Whether being absent from lessons is an effective way of demonstrating is something that everyone can judge for themselves. So, does the right to strike now apply to everyone? No. Huh? But that's in the basic law. Yes, but only at number nine. Because freedom of religion is enshrined in Article 4 and Article 137 of the Weimar Constitution also states that the churches can regulate their own affairs. This means that the churches can even simply determine labor law according to instructions from the employer. Can you imagine that the employer can decide at will what to do, what you get in return, or whether you will still have your job tomorrow? This is called the first way. Even the churches do that not really anymore. As a second way, the churches could negotiate collective agreements with the trade unions. However, only the evangelical church in Berlin, Brandenburg, Silesian, Upper Lusatia, and the North Albion Evangelical Lutheran Church do this. But even here, the churches excluded the right to strike. Most churches, whether Protestant or Catholic, as well as Diakonie and Caritas, work with a third way, a set labor contract guidelines in committees with equal representation. Civil servants have no rights to strike. They have a special duty of loyalty to their employer and the employer has a special duty of care. They therefore have no right to strike. Increases in civil servant salaries are often linked to collective wage agreements in the public sector. Let's move on to the longest strike in the history of the Federal Republic of Germany. 
On 24th October 1956, a 16-week-long strike began in Kiel shipyards, initially involving 18,000 workers and eventually extending to 38 companies and over 34,000 employees. It was not about more pay. As I mentioned here, employees in Germany have the right to sick pay. At that time, this only existed for white-collar workers, not blue-collar workers. If we include a wildcat strike or illegal strike, the longest strike in Germany actually lasted 449 days. In Erwitte, the management of a cement work had prepared redundancies of employees, some of whom had been working there for decades. These plant redundancies enraged the employees so much that they occupied the plant and won their case in the courts. Have you ever been on a strike? So, even if it has looked like it in the last few days, people in Germany are not particularly keen to strike, but it is a legitimate means in wage disputes. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you next time. At the time, the PIN Group was largely owned by Alex Springer Verlag. Yeah. After a good three days, they sat down and the negotiation So does the strike 